I'm gonna make the bug that makes that noise. That was supposed to be what a cicada sounds like. I've been drawing and stenciling and trying to get something that I'm happy with, and I think this is good. Cicadas are kind of weird. Uh, there's two different kinds of cicadas in North America here. There's a periodical cicada and there's uh, annual cicadas. The periodical ones live underground for 13 to 17 years. And then when it's time, they come out in a great swarm or brood is what they call it. The lifespan of an annual cicada is only two to 15 years. So the noise that you always hear from a cicada that's the courtship call from the males. They actually have an organ called the timbal. There's two of them. One on each side of their anterior abdominal, abdominal region <laughs> by their abdomen. And this is how it's described. It buckles by muscular action and being made of resolin unbuckled rapidly on muscle relaxation, and the rapid action of muscle produces the their characteristic sound sounds like a complicated way of saying there's something on them that vibrates and makes a loud noise and uh, the sounds they get pretty complicated and they do some pretty complicated things to make them sound just a little bit different you can't even hear a difference the human a human ear can't even hear the difference but um, Apparently it's all part of mating and courtship and stuff that they, it, it, it ensures that their song attracts only appropriate mates. So they're picky. They lay their eggs in tree bark. When they hatch, the nymphs drop to the ground and then they burrow into the ground. So they're a nymph to begin with and then they have, they got the, fr the strong front mandibles or legs and the, they're for digging and excavating, they live in the ground to start with. So the cicada nymphs, they drink tree sap of different, of various species of trees, oak, cypress, willow, ash, maple, and uh, they say it's common folklore that adults do not eat. They actually do. Um, they drink tree sap still, plant sap. They got mouth parts that are for that, apparently. So the cicadas, they've developed that uh, way of brooding where their lifespan can is extended to like 17, 13 to 17 years uh, in response to the predators that are becoming more prevalent or have become more prevalent, like the cicada killer wasp and praying mantis. That way, uh, the, the predators' lifespans are not as long as that. And so they, in a response, they've just turned to outliving them. That's pretty interesting. Oh, a lot of things want to eat them. By birds, squirrels, bats, wasps. Mantises, spiders, robber flies, fish. That's good. Okay, that's enough fun facts about cicadas. So now I'm gonna cut out the wings. So the cicada is very roughly carved out. I decided to make this bait out of balsa wood for maximum buoyancy. Since it's gonna have these two uh, polycarbonate wings on its side, I'm gonna need some wood that really floats. But I've got it carved out. Um, 
Now I'm going to sand it smooth and then I'm going to start putting some more body detail into it. So I'm just drawing out the lines on this body that I'm going to have to carve into it. They got a lot of them. So that'll be a good start on the body carvings. This right here is actually something I'm going to carve pretty deep and the wing is going to set into it. That'll help keep the wing secure to the body, I think. I need to cut the hooks or the the through wire slot for this cicada. And I'm thinking I want the hook hanger to come out somewhere around here and the line tie is going to be up here. So I'm going to have to cut a slot that's like that deep. Just enough for this hook hanger to stick out and this line tie to be right here. There, I got that slot cut. Now I gotta make the wire. This is just a stainless steel wire. I think it's 0 .031 inches in diameter. I just buy it off of eBay. Um, now I just got to form it around these nails. There. The wire is formed. Me doing through wire is never a pretty thing, but I can get it done. Now I just need to get it to fit into this slot. There, it's close. This back one is sticking out a little too far, but I'm going to be able to push it down when I glue it in just like that. But before I glue it in, I need to drill a hole for there to be lead in the belly of this bait. I'm going to drill a quarter inch hole in the belly. And I'm going to kind of, I'm going to drill a hole. And then I'm going to set it back about half the width of this drill bit. And drill down again. That way it's a, it's a longer hole than it is wide. I think it's going to need that little bit of extra lead to sit stable. Is that through wire I just made? There we go. Alright, now I'm gonna glue this in and I'm gonna pour some lead. Sorry about the rain. I don't know if that's loud or not, but it's been raining all day. So I glued the front end first and I'm just letting that chill. It's gonna get set up and then I'm gonna glue the back end push down the back end and add the glue and all that. And then the wire will be in there for good. And then I'm gonna pour the lead. Now I just gotta hold it there for like 30 seconds without gluing my pliers to it too. There, that looks good. 
I'm going to go put some lead in this bait. So, I've got some baking soda and some super glue. And I'm going to cover up this hole in this slot. I had some comments in the last video that I did baking soda and super glue to do this. And he said you can just put the baking soda where it needs to be and then uh, just put super glue over it and it should be good. You don't have to layer it up or anything. I feel like it needs more. Might not, it's just a feeling. That's plenty, I think. It's already dry. I'm just gonna sand that smooth. Now I can get back to carving. And there is plenty to do. There are the two wings for the cicada. I'm gonna rub some black paint on these two wings and then uh, wipe it off with some paint thinner. And that should leave black lines where the, uh, where the lines are that I scored. There, you can kind of see how the lines turn black. Now I'm going to get back to carving the cicada's body. It's quite a bit of detail packed into this little thing. It's going to look cool. By the way, for this little cicada, I'm not really going for a particular action. I'm just going to kind of stick these wings on, on the sides and see what it does. I'm not sure if the wings sticking off the back like that on both sides is going to produce any sort of action, I don't, I don't know. I've never tried anything like this, so I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna put a lip on it, I'm not gonna do anything different to it. It's just gonna be a body, a hook, the line tie, and these wings, just to see what it does. Honestly, I don't really like carving on balsa wood. You can't really feel what you're doing. And I mess up quite a bit but sometimes you just have to use it because you need a bait to float. I don't think I'm gonna carve anything out or make anything out of wood for the legs. I think I'm going to add the legs after I put the clear coat on and the hooks or the hook on the bottom will kind of imitate some legs too. Almost done carving, I just got some more sanding to do to smooth out all these details and then it's ready to seal, seal the wood. I just finished sealing it. I've sanded it multiple times and sealed it again. It's ready to paint. So where I'm from, cicadas, they look like this. There's green in them and, and black. Pretty much just green and black. But they can look like that too. 
I guess. Yeah, from what I've seen, there's there's that gold and black with a red or orange eye. There's also that um, all green cicada. I'm not gonna do that one. Kinda looks too plain. Yep, I'm gonna go for a greenish one. There's a cicada killer wasp. That could be a cool bait someday. But maybe if uh, I think of something, some other colors that might look good with this uh, pattern, I might add it in. So I just came across this picture and that looks awesome. I'm gonna go with, it's kinda more gold on the head and then it fades to green. And then I'll add in all the black details. That looks good. Almost out of white. But first, we're gonna paint the whole thing white. Yeah, I'm gonna use a fluorescent green and a pearlized gold and try to maintain a really, really bright colors with that. And then just go in with flat black. So there's like super high contrast between the bright colors and the black. I think that's what will make this bait look good. I might give it red eyes too. Maybe not. It doesn't have red eyes in the picture, but it might look good. Uh, gold and fluorescent green. I'm gonna make the fade from gold to green from the head to the tail. I didn't realize I had some iridescent yellow, or iridescent green. I'm gonna use that so it's shiny. It was hiding behind the fluorescent colors. I know a lot of people, they like to be very careful and uh, put thin layers of paint on baits just through and through all the time. That's, that's their technique. But I don't know, it might be a bad technique on my end, but sometimes I like to just glob that paint on for a certain effect. Like it kind of makes it look shinier in some spots. It could just be a product of being lazy, but I think that looks pretty good. It kind of smooths out details too, if you really glob it on. But you know, you can't get away with that 100% of the time. Did you guys even see that? I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? So that needs to dry, and then uh, just brush on black details, and brush on maybe some red details. Yeah, the rest of this bait's just gonna be done by brush, I think. If you guys remember the dragonfly, I painted the wings on it, and it's holding up pretty good. The clear coat that I sprayed on the wings isn't chipping off or anything. So, I might do that for this, this bait too. Put some green, some gold, and some black details into these wings. Gives them a little bit more depth. I think it'll look good. I'm fading some white up from the bottom to the top right here, specifically because uh, this is where the wings are gonna go over. And I'm thinking I'm gonna want kind of a, a lighter background for the wings so they show up better, or at least so the detail in the wings will show up better. 
but it's not going to be completely white. It's just kind of fading from the bottom to the top. So I've got quite a bit of detail on it. Um, I still need to do the head. I don't really have anything on the head right now. It's turning out pretty good though. We are close to being done. So that's kind of what it'll look like with the wing. I don't think there'll be any mistaking if that's a cicada or not. That looks pretty good. So right now I can't think of anything else I want to paint on it. So if I don't think of anything, I'm going to clear coat this right now. There it is with the clear coat. Nice and shiny. Okay. Time to see if I can get this lid off. Oh, that was easy. So I'm just gonna spray this clear coat, uh, Diamond Clear, KBS Diamond Clear on these wings, both sides. Just a nice thin clear coat. So they'll be ready to attach to the body. There. Just get a fan going. So, uh, the body's clear coated. The wings are clear coated. Just gotta wait for all this to set up. And then I'm gonna put the bait together, probably tomorrow morning, and go fishing. All that's left to do is install the wings. Just have to drill out a pilot hole, glue them and screw them to the sides. That's the fit. Worked out pretty good. So I just backed off the screw, uh, put some super glue in there, spreading it around a little bit, making sure it's on the threads. Put the wing in place where it'll stay because the super glue is actually going to set up now with it and then screw it back in. I'm going to try to have both the screws vertical when they're done. They're just flat heads. There we go, that's one. The screws I'm using are really small, quarter inch long, uh, lure making specific screws. There's both wings. And there is the cicada. All finished. I put a size 8 treble hook on the back. Um, I also installed, or just glued in some little legs, drilled the pilot holes and glued in the flashy string. It ended up being a two and a half inch bait that weighs less than a quarter ounce. And it floats. I have no idea if this bait's gonna produce any action or not. All I'm relying on are the wings to do something. So we'll see, it'll be interesting. If it doesn't, it's fine, I'll just twitch it across the top and still try to catch something, but let's go see how it swims. Well, the cicada uh, doesn't have any action in particular, which was slightly expected, but, you know, would have been cool if it did. I guess what I'm thinking for it now is I can add some kind of uh, buzz bait on the front, um, you know, some kind of traditional style piece of hardware on the front 
like a prop or something that gives it some kind of action. But maybe I won't when I fish for it in this next video. Maybe for now, I'm just gonna leave it as is and try to catch a fish with it, you know? Cause it can be done. I mean, fish will bite anything that moves, but it'd be cool just to catch a fish on it just as it is right now. It really is a gorgeous looking bait though. Don't you think, Chippy? Yeah, I'm gonna go fish with this bait. So, on to the next bait.